Hi, I'm Gabriel Castro from ExoticWoodPen.com. The tools that we're going to use, we're going to use a table saw, we're going to use a drill press, a mini band saw, a mini lathe, and various jigs that we're going to make. Okay, before we start on using the table saw jig, we're going to, we need to make a blank first. This one is already marked upper and lower. Uh, this is the center line, of course, and this is for a cigar pen. You can see it's already been segmented. Uh, this is just a, for use as an illustration here. This is a stabilized maple, maple burl, bloodwood with veneers in the middle. So we're going to be using Bacote, and I have two pieces of Bacote. I already, already ripped them. Uh, these are one quarter inch thick and one eighth inch uh, uh, thick strips of bloodwood. And uh, this one, the second one we're going to use uh, again, but the middle is about uh, is also a quarter inch or less than a quarter of an inch thick, about three sixteenths, and that's going to be a single stripe. And then this is going to be a double stripe, so that way we can know which one's which. So before we start that. Um, you're, you're going to use, you can use uh, colored veneers. This is a dyed white veneer. This is a dyed black veneer. And you can get those um, at Rockler or any uh, hardwood supplier. Uh, what I've done, or you know what, they, they also have uh, primary colors. These are fun if you want to mix it up a little bit. Um, I've already pre- pre-cut up quite a bit of these ahead of time just for use and uh, see I already I usually I rip them in a uh, one inch wide strips I made a template using a piece of hardboard um, this is uh, one inch wide and I like using the hardboard as a straight edge because when you cut against it use the rough end down that grips really well so that when you scribe it on here uh, this this isn't going to slip on you uh, before I used to use a piece of hardwood and it would have a tendency to slip as a straight edge so if you have a scrap piece of hardboard you can just go ahead and put that down and just apply it down with hand pressure and then use a straight edge or I, uh, um, I just use a box knife. You can use an exacto or whichever to cut that straight down, and uh, those rip out very well. Uh, again, I have these already cut in one uh, 12 inches. So what I'm going to do is, if these are roughly six inches here, I'm just going to mark this using one of these. And to cross cut those, I'm not getting a very technical. I'm just using a pair of pair of scissors from the 99 cent store. Nothing, nothing extreme. Um, also, there really isn't any rules when it comes to segmenting. You can use different sorts of materials, and uh, we're going to use. Uh, like for instance, uh, this blank here, every two stripes, that's this. If this was six inches long, you're going to use one of these uh, pieces of veneer that's 12 inches. You're going to use two of these for, for every one section. So you're going to need three of these, three of these, and then you're going to use one and a half in black for the center. So we'll go ahead and uh, cut those up real quick. Okay, so we need to cut a few strips of veneer. So again, this is a piece of hardboard. It's cut just a little over a foot long. So it overlaps on each side of the veneer about a quarter of an inch. And I'm just going to place that right up to the edge. Just eyeball it. Again, rough side down. And I'm just going to put some hand pressure. I'm going to use a basic box cutter. A couple of scribes. Feel it break through on the second pass gives you a nice clean cut and then I'm going to I'm going to use quite a bit of this so I'm just going to use the full sheet 
And then what I don't use in full links, I'll use in the actual scallops. And you can see that goes pretty quickly and I'll do the same thing with the black for opposing colors. Okay, here we are again uh, after I got my stacks of veneers, my black and white veneers. I want to alternate the colors. This is the, the orientation I want to lay out the wood. I want to keep the knots up. So when it goes together, it's going to be like this. So, and I want that inside so that when you turn it down, you have more of that, of that grain showing of the knot. So I'd, I'd like to just build it um, with the veneers in place first, stack it tightly, and then drop some uh, thin CA on top after I clamp it. So see how that moved on me? If you do that with the glue, it likes to walk on you quite a bit from my experience, and it just doesn't glue up straight. Sometimes the glue has a tendency to set before you can clamp it, and you end up with a uh, piece that's that's not square or straight, especially when your veneers are a little bit long. I only marked them from one side, so I'm going to make sure all my veneers are pushed down, and I'm going to scoot all these pieces to the end. So now the little thing that I do, which is probably unorthodox compared to what some people would do, is now see I want to double check the bottom. See I've got good coverage as far as grain goes top to bottom. So I want to hold that in place. I'm going to take some spring clamps, some binder clips, and put that about halfway down and then that's going to give me good even pressure top to bottom. Normally I will do this outside a little bit more lower. Normally I'll do this outside because of the, the fumes from the CA glue. If you have a chemical respirator, wear a chemical respirator if you're not working outside. But for the sake of uh, filming, I'm just going to put some thin CA in there. Let that soak. Let that soak in. Give it a couple seconds. And I'm going to use some uh, activator to accelerate that. You see that bubble up. Okay. Flip that over. I'm going to reverse that. It doesn't need it really. And I'm going to do the exact same same thing and that CA is going to go work its magic all the way in on both sides. I'm probably using more adhesive than I need to but it's okay. Let that soak for a minute and then I'm going to give it one more quick shot. And you see that bubble and that steam come off of that so you know it's curing. I'm going to do it one more quick shot on top. Okay. okay. I'm break that loose. Okay, there's one of ours, and then we'll. That's one blank set. Again, let's look at the grain, see which way it's going. Okay, I like that. One down, one up. Do white veneer, black veneer, white veneer. This is going to be a double bloodwood center. So bloodwood, white veneer, black veneer, white veneer, another piece of bloodwood, white veneer. Oops, I almost grabbed two blacks, black veneer, white veneer, and then bloodwood. Double check that, give it a good slap, make sure it's all the way down. And see we got 
white, black, white. I flip it over the other side. Everything looks so. So now that this one is together and it's pretty even on the bottom, give that another good slap. Uh, this one's a little bit wider than the capacity of the spring clamp. So I'm just going to use these spring clamps to hold it. I'm not going to use them to glue them together. I'm going to use these small one inch C clamps from Harbor Freight to put that right in the middle. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to put that one on there. Remove that. So that looks pretty good all the way around. And then I'll just do the same process. Let that soak for a second. Okay, I'm just going to flip that over. And that, again, is wax paper on the bottom in case I didn't mention that. It's always good to just go to the 99 cent store and buy some more of that and just keep that on hand in your garage for, for this sort of thing. And let that set for a second. And now we're at the bandsaw. Uh, now, because this is a, we just what we want to do is we want to trim off all this end right here. And um, I just left my gloves on because I'm going to be doing a lot. We'll be doing a lot of uh, gluing, so. What you want to do is we're going to trim off this right here, and then we'll sand it, and then we'll trim it. And uh, oh, because this is CA glue, you're going to get a lot of vapor from the uh, from the CA glue as it gets heated up from the band, from the bandsaw. It's not a real sharp blade, so uh, that's going to cause a little bit of uh, a little bit of heat. That's the buildup. What's going to give off that vapor? So be aware that when you do cut it, uh, you want to make sure your garage door is open so that you're not uh, affected by that vapor. I have mine closed for the sake of background noise. I live off a busy street. Also, the bandsaw is good for cutting off all these little uh, pieces from the, that uh, fizz up on you on the side. Um, that way, when you take it to your disc sander, uh, there's less of that that you have to worry about loading up on your sandpaper. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, those are basically all trimmed up. I'm just going to take one side to the disander on each one of these, and then we will reference off that off the other side to to make sure it's completely uh, symmetrical. So give me a second to set up for that. Okay, so I don't have a real uh, dedicated disc sander, so at my lathe, I am going to use this jig attachment that I made for my dust collection hookup. And this is uh, an old piece of metal. I'm going to use some rare earth magnets on the front of the lathe bed to hold that piece of tin in place. Turn the light on. And those rare earth magnets are going to attach right here. And then for a disc sander, I have a six inch uh, plywood disc with an M2 taper. And that's just going to go right inside there. And then I'll hook up my disc collection. Voila, there's a disc sander on my lathe. So I'm getting multiple purpose. Uh, this is just a generic uh, uh, tool rest or, or that goes in the tool rest from in the banjo uh, in in here to do your sanding against. Oops, make sure that's in the room. Okay, Okay, so on the table saw, it's time to square up each one of these blanks. I'm a little, I've got most of the glue and everything shaved off the one side right here from the disc sander. And uh, I just need to clean up the other side here. So I'm making sure that I'm just barely touching that blade. So I just want to run that through here to clean that cut up. And make sure I cut the right side. Do the same thing with the other blank. Now this one should be the same as this one, so I'm just going to double check that. And that's a little bit tighter, so that's good. This is the side I start smoothing, so that's the side I just want to rough, rough cut. Now this one is a little bit wider because it's got uh, more more uh, going on in the middle. So I want to double check the width of this. Make sure that that is going to be clean. downside is on this one and this one this one is much wider than it is uh, thicker so we're gonna have to do this one a little bit different and uh, we'll save this one I think for the drill press so we'll start with one of these on the table saw first so I want to start off with the clean end first, make sure that's at 90 degrees. Okay, now Let's decide. Uh, this is the this is the one that had all the knots. Let's 
in the middle right here, so I'm going to have to mark that uh, for a cigar. Okay, so this is the blank. I'm going to use uh, this right here to mark this. So using the segmenting jig, now we're going to get ready to start our scallops. Uh, this is half of it right here. This is the lower end first. It doesn't make any difference which end you use. Uh, we're going to make our first cut. We're going to draw a line down the middle, roughly down the center. And then our first cut is going to be, be here. Our second cut will just be 100, 180 degrees over that's going to be flipped over that way and then you'll see how it goes then you're going to rotate it after we get those pieces glued on after each cut so we're going to put this on here Again, it doesn't make, doesn't make any difference as long as you get that center line marked on the center line and just to ensure that we're doing that correctly I want to uh, I'm going to put a clamp on this right here. This is a um, uh, just a piece of scrap, and it has a little notch, a notch in it right here, and that's going to be for any buildup of sawdust after the cut. I'm going to clamp that in place. And again, this clamp is only this clamp is only for the for the stop. This clamp here is the clamp for to hold this down to keep this from moving. And we're going to cut and we're going to cut um, both sides before we adjust that. Okay. That went by pretty quick. Normally I use the uh, have a pencil non-sharpened and on the blunt side I have another piece of an eraser just as a just as a grabbing tool in case this end gets cut off you can see it got nicked once that way I have another end to grab a piece of wood to get get it away from the blade so now what we're going to do is we're going to glue this in place we're going to glue a scallop that we cut off on here and we want to make sure we go with the grain and even though this is only three quarters of an inch wide, this is about seven eighths of an inch or actually an inch wide. We're just going to line that right up on the center like that. Okay, so now we'll just go ahead and glue that in place. Okay, so on the table saw, I've got a couple trays of uh, veneers that are already pre cut. Uh, over here, I'm going to use a medium CA. I'm just going to put a, a drop of that piece of white veneer, another drop of medium CA, black veneer, repeat the process. Another drop and then with the grain in the same orientation I'm just gonna push and hold that in place and I've got the uh, wax paper underneath and I'm going to try and line that up pretty closely just with some hand pressure using the fence as a stop shoot a little accelerator Okay, and then I'm going to go to the disc sander real quick. Okay, that I just went to the disc sander, just knocked off the very edge of that right there real quick. 
Uh, I'm not going to worry about the overhang at all on there. Um, I'll trim that up after the second one I do. So move these trays out of the way. And we'll get set up for the next segment cut on the table saw. Again, I have the stop in place. So I'm flipping that around 180 degrees. Okay, we'll go ahead and clean that up on the disc sander. Okay, at the disc sander, you can see we've got a little bit of a little bit of overhang right there. So we'll just turn that up. There. And you can see how that looks. Uh, it's okay because if it's inset a little bit, you don't have to worry about that because by the time you turn it, all that's going to be perfectly round. Okay, here we are back after we trim that up. So we have to do two more cuts. we got to do one on this side and then one on this side. So our first cuts were across the grain. Now we're going to go this way, which is going to be diagonally. You can choose to cut this off right now so that you can end up right there. You want to be square on that tip. So you can just draw your imaginary line. And, of course, that's an exaggeration. I'm going to probably cut it back just a little bit so that way you know where your next pieces are going to be when you line it up on that middle, which is a lot easier. And just a little more. That's pretty, that's pretty good right there like that. We're going to rotate that and we're going to be right down that middle. So now we'll, we'll go ahead and glue a line or a scallop on that side. Then we'll flip it over, cut, and glue again. And then I'll just do that real quick. And we'll just just sand that off. OK, 
Okay, that was just disended off, so now we've got three of the four cuts. So this is the last one we're going to do. Make sure that goes all the way against the stop. Lock that down. And work that glue in as you go. It doesn't make too much difference if it's a little long on the top is when you sand it all down. That's going to work. Push down again. Take that back to the disc sander and sand it. Okay, here we are again. We just need to sand this last little piece over here on the end. Uh, dust collection is coming on in a second. This one right here, I left it a little bit too wide. So it took a little bit more standing to take it down. So now we'll go back to the table saw and then just trim that off on the end. Then we'll flip it over and then we'll repeat our cuts on the other side. Okay, we got both sides right there, so we need to trim off the middle. A little more. That looks good. In the jig, cut the sides off of that.
Okay, Desander. Okay, this is the last piece here that needs to be uh, sanded down. You can see a little bit more on, on the on the ends. Just send that off. back to the temple side to cut that off and then we'll do the other side. Okay so at the table saw just like this side we want to cut this end off right here right at that tip. So we'll do a small cut first and then do a cleanup cut afterwards. And that's probably close to where we're going to get right there. So we'll adjust that. That looks pretty good in my book. So, and then we'll double check the length. This is the lower end of the cigar. And then looks like we're good there. So now all we need to do is the bottom end. So and that's going to be here. So again, we're going to we're going to cut down the middle here. So we'll put that in place on that mark, which is right there. Lock that in place. Now we're going to go back and adjust the stop. It's not much of an adjustment. Just a eighth of an inch or less. Double check it, push it all the way back. I'm still there where I need to be. Okay, okay so now we're ready to make our cut.
And these are all random pieces that I had cut from a previous project. So not everyone is going to be the same size. As long as they're oversized or within the uh, the same size of the of the scalp, it doesn't really make too much difference. Oops, got a little super glue on my fingers there. Again. Make sure I'm centered on that. Give it some good pressure. You're going to go through a lot of uh, accelerator and super glue doing this. And back to the disc grinder. Okay, back at the table saw, we got one cut done. Flip it over, get ready to do the other cut. Okay.
Okay, what's that? Okay, so off camera, I just went and finished the rest of that one right there, the lower. So we have the upper and the lower. And uh, that's what the finished blanks will look like. Okay, so here I am. I want to cut this in half. And I want to, like in the photo, I want to split this. This is the lower end of the cigar pen. And I want to invert these sides. So I'm going to cut this in half. I'll trim it after I invert it. So first thing I need to do is I need to cut using a piece of Purple Heart. Now I put a, a line on one side on the face up and this is my last cut on this side right here. So I know that I'm going to be uh, perpendicular from one face to the next. So that's going to go in my jig and I'm going to cut roughly a quarter of an inch which is going to be the same the same thickness here so I'll just eyeball that in place and I'm going to clamp that in just using a spring clamp it doesn't have to be exact so I'm going to use uh, my uh, uh, pull saw And uh, I'm just going to pull that, cut that straight through. Okay, so I know that. That cut is good on both sides, square all the way around. Now I need to do the same thing here. It uh, actually doesn't really matter where I cut it, but I'm going to cut it um, right down the middle. I'm just going to eyeball that in there. Because when I invert it, I'm going to remark it and cut it again. So now, these two ends, knowing that I cut those on the table saw, are going to be square. So I'm going to put that in there like that. After I put some veneers, I'm going to glue it in place. And we'll do that next. Okay, so make sure you mark your veneers the same diameter or the same, uh, the same size as those blanks. Um, I'm just going to undercut those uh, those lines right there so that they fit on the inside. It'll make it a lot easier when I when I start to glue up. Again, just a pair of cheap scissors from the 99 cent store is going to work fine. Get white, black, white. Purple heart, white, black, white. And, and then make sure that you line those points up. And you're going to want to uh, clamp that, dry clamp it first. Make sure you're lined up correctly. Good. 
Okay, now the fun part, we'll just go ahead and use again some more CA thin. Let that set for a second. Give a little shot. Flip her over. Okay, back to the sander and we'll clean that up. Okay, back at the disc sander, we just got a little bit of cleanup here. I'm not going to take that to the bandsaw. that down the middle and trim it to length or not okay so here we are back at the miter saw what we need to do now is trim since this is a lower portion of the cigar we need to trim this to fit these lines which is just a little bit past here but when you turn all this down that's really going to shrink so it looks like it's going to be be really short the bacote but it's not so I'm just going to make a small mark, roughly in the middle, right on that line, because I'm not going to be doing any trimming with the barrel trimmer. If I know it's not going to be, I'm just going to go a little bit proud, actually. I'm going to do a little bit of trimming, but not very much. Okay, so put that back in there for my cut. Clamp that in place. Get some light on the subject. Okay. Other side. I've got a bit of a mark right here. Uh, this is going to be for my medallion I just cut. Um, I have a stop block here glued in place. I have a spacer block that, uh, from an off cut. This is going to be uh, the medallion. I want to cut in one quarter inch all the way in. I need to lock that in place with a sliding wedge. Tap that in there with a hammer. Because this has sandpaper on one side, it's not going to move. And then I'm going to line this up. Okay, now 
See that right there? That's a good cut all the way through, about the same with the veneer top to bottom. So, and that only went through the first layer of the veneer. We're going to repeat that same cut. This is the off cut right here. We'll save that. Clear that out. And important to note that on the back side of that, let me get a different angle of that shot. Um, on the back side right here of this, you see how that's cut all the way through. Uh, important, you need a clear shot or a hole, an exit hole, for those wood fibers to come out of. Otherwise, it's going to get bound up on you, uh, and it won't cut properly. So make sure you have an exit hole. On, on this one over here, we'll have the same thing uh, going when we do a larger bit on that. So that's very important to make sure you have an exit. Let's okay, now... Same thing, because I have two flat sides, this is going to rub against that, and that will lock that securely in place. Push that all the way up, and that slide's going to hold it. You can feel that when it completes that cut. Okay, now that one was just a little bit off. You can see how we're going into a little bit of veneer. We can go ahead and shape that out on the uh, in the drill press on both sides, give it an even look. Or the uh, the lathe actually is. We'll put a sander on it, a drum sander using a Jacob's chuck. Okay, so here we are at the at the lathe. I have a one inch uh, disc or one inch uh, sander on here, drum sander, and I'm just gonna sand this out to where it's even on both sides. Just get barely get rid of the white, and I'll have black on both ends going. Turn on the dust collection. <laughs> Okay, so back at the drill press, now I need a couple of uh, medallions to put on each side. So I've got a piece of uh, a burl, a stabilized maple burl. I'm going to use a, a dark color for some contrast. I'm just going to go ahead and push that right up there to the edge, edge of that. Put my slide in there. Tap that in place. Looks like so. It looks like that broke loose on the bottom. I still got my medallion, but that's okay. I still have a guide on both sides as long as it lines up. 
Okay, so at the disc sander, you can see there's a little bit of an edge right here that's sticking out and uh, not so much on, on one side. This side's okay, this side has a little bit of an edge and that's from the, from the saw kerf. So I just want to relief that just a little bit on both sides. So when I uh, load these into the joint, uh, the glue will go in a lot easier. So we'll go ahead and do one real quick. Nothing severe. There, you see both of those are done really quick. And then even though there's a couple of cracks in there, once you get the CA in there, it's going to flood through that and fill those joints. Now when we get ready to do our scallops on the drill press, this is a, a, another piece of veneer, but this one is two inches wide. And uh, you can see there's a little bit of a mark right there. So I'm just doubling that up. And I'm going to cut more than one of these. And the reason being is because, of course, the grain on this is going up, up and down. When we're doing those scallops, we're going to need the grain on the drill press. We need the grain to go crossways. So, and the reason for that is we're going to cut one inch strips this way across diagonally, not diagonally, but cross grain. And that is because that is going to bend like that. You couldn't get, you can get it to bend like this, but it, doesn't like to bend in a really tight circumference. But uh, this is the way I do the do the uh, the scallops on the other. So I'm just going to mark these one inch wide all the way down. And then I'm going to cut those just with a pair of scissors. And I'm just going to do all this off camera and stockpile it on the end. Okay, so... We're getting ready to glue the uh, medallions on the side. In the picture, it looks like it goes straight through from one end and comes out the other, but it doesn't. Now, earlier I had mentioned, now this is a piece of uh, straight grained veneer, so the grain is running uh, horizontally with it. So if you try and put that in here and then try and bend that, you can see that it's not going to bend. It bends a little bit, but it's going to break. See, it's already splitting. Uh, you do that with three pieces, and you're not going to have any luck trying to get that in there. All it's going to do is bounce back on you. So what we need to do is we need to uh, get the grain. Now, this grain is, is, is up and down, not sideways. So let me zoom out a little bit. Layer this in, white, black, white. And it's okay to have some overhang. We'll trim that off afterwards. And you can see how that's in there. And we're going to align this medallion in the middle. One inch C clamp. Okay, so now we can now we can go ahead and start to tighten that down. And the good thing about three layers of veneers is it's about the same thickness, um, a little bit less once you get down to its final tightness, as the thickness of the um, of the hole saw 
of the actual blade itself so it's going to follow the same diameter inside and out so again just like before so I have the wax paper under it uh, CA thin couple drops inside and out and that's the good thing about these Harbor Freight clamps is you're not going to hurt them these little C clamps Make sure you wear some gloves with this. Okay, whoops, I got some glue on glue on the inside right here, so I'm gonna have to take that and uh, sand it out real quick before I apply uh, the next layer. Okay, here we are at the other basic tool, the bandsaw. I uh, use this one. Uh, we used this one a little bit earlier, and we're going to use it again to do some trimming before we do some sanding, make our job a lot easier. So you can see the blank is already taking shape. We'll just sand that off next and then we'll load this other part. Okay, that side is done. Now it's time to load the veneers. Black, white, or white black white load the veneers put the medallion in we'll go ahead and squeeze that in place back that out a little bit Make sure that that is centered and all my veneers are, are in there. Just eyeball everything, give it a good squeeze. That looks good all the way around. Now remember that, that relief that we put in, that's going to help that CA glue go all the way in and do its job finger with the CA glue on there. Put another little drop. Wow. Okay. Those medallions are in there. Now we'll just cut that back off on the bandsaw and sand it.
Now we'll just clean that up on, on the disander again. Not exactly a picture perfect blank, but it will look good once you turn it. Okay, here we are back at the mini lathe. As I said before, I use this for all my drilling uh, for my segmenting my segmented pins. I've got a Jacobs chuck in, in the tailstock. I've got a 2564 drill bit. And I'm going to use a cigar pen. And I've got a four jaw chuck in here ready to go. So this is the upper right here with the medallions. So I'm just going to center that. Lock that in place, and I'm going to see how that lines up. I'm on a slow speed on the variable speed. good there looks good there do the same for the other side Let me spin that and make sure it looks good okay You can see the center of that as it's turning. Okay, that's see that that's pretty dead on center using the four jaw chuck. So the only thing left to do now is just glue those up and turn it. Okay, okay my uh, brass is already sanded. This is for the lower. Um, I'm all out of my regular white glue that I normally use to glue my wood blanks up. So this is going to be the Elmer's uh, Wood Glue Max. So I'm just going to use a little bit of that. If I can open that up. We used it before. Still works good. I haven't used epoxy in years. So, just a little dab, and I thought I'd double check that. I 
I'm a little short. Not the right spacing there. Um, right there where I need to be on both sides. And we'll just let that cure overnight. Actually, it doesn't even need to cure overnight, but it's getting late and I got to work tomorrow. So in the mini lathe, for my pen milling and for squaring up the ends of the blanks, I use a pen mandrel uh, and a Jacob's chuck and a four jaw chuck on the other side. And uh, this is pretty much the setup that I use for just about everything. And uh, you can do it in the drill press also, but sometimes your drill press isn't exactly very accurate. This way, to me, I've had the best results with. Okay, in the mini lathe, we're going to turn the first one uh, that we made on the table saw with the Purple Heart center band. Go we'll get that one started. Turn the speed up. sure that there aren't any voids anywhere. There's a small little void right here in the veneer and a little bit right there. So before I go to scrape anything else off, I want to uh, put some CA glue down in this area and then um, I'm going to use some thin. liberal amount on both sides Let's hit that with a little accelerator that crystallize Go back and hit it with just a little bit more. Okay. And we're going to return this area here. 
that, I'm going to use my carbide scraper, my contour scraper here. Put this, my safety glasses back on. In the back here. So now I'm going to put some CA glue on it. I'm going to do three coats of thin and two coats of medium. And this is at a slow speed. You shoot it with a little accelerator. One. Two coats. There's three coats of thin, and then I'm going to do two coats of medium, medium CA. Medium gets a little grabby. Let's start sanding it with uh, two twenty and four hundred.
Okay, and then my on here, I turn it up, and then I just go right to hut, perfect pen polish. I know there's a lot of different ways out there that people have methods for doing um, for doing their finishing. So I'm not discounting anyone's way if they want to put 20 coats of CA glue on, you still get a fabulous finish. That's great. You can still get a good finish with a lot less work. And that's a beautiful finish right there. And then we'll go ahead and assemble that one. Okay, so at the drill press, I'm going to use a cigar pen. I'm going to do this one here in chrome. Uh, I do a lot in black, and this one looks really good in chrome too. So we'll go ahead and empty the contents out. I use a, a block. This is my pen press jig right here. It's a piece of scrap turned with a half inch shank. I have a YouTube video on it, so you can check it out at your convenience. But it's pretty simple. It goes on there like that. Okay, hold it steady. Give it a little pull. There it is. It's that part's done. Okay, so this is going to be the back end. I want to bend this, bend this out a little bit. It's a little bit tighter than what I like it. Put the cap on that, and I'm just going to run that clip right up the middle. I don't want it to cover up either of those scallops. Give it a push. Okay, there's half of it. Um, let's see, this is this is the tip right here. So this is the end for the transmission. I want that to go on the opposite side. Lower this back down just a little bit further. And the side for the tip goes in there. Let's assemble the transmission. Drop the spring that goes the other way to tighten in first. Screw the tip on. 